Welcome in in you mean Freund. Sorry if I butchered that, but I'm really trying, guys. <laughs> we finally made it to southern Germany, and man, do we have some exciting things planned today. This vlog is gonna be equal parts food, sports, history, culture, and it's a day that we're never gonna forget. But first, it's coffee time. A few quick tips about the metro. It's cash only up to 20 euros, so make sure that you have small bills. And depending on the type of ticket you need, it might be better to get a group ticket if there's more than one person. We're staying a bit outside of the city center, so we are taking public transit through a lot of the places that we're going today that is outside of the center of Old Town. We're currently on the underground to head to a coffee shop that is ranked consistently in like the top three of every blog that we saw. So it, for a city as big as Munich, it has to be good, right? Well, that's a bummer. Uh, Cafe Bla is closed right now. Even though it says it's open online and it says it's open on the door, it's clearly closed. I guess we gotta adapt and overcome. So we are going to head back into the city center of Munich and I guess just grab coffee on the go. We grabbed two flat whites at Witz der Coffee. It's quickly on the way to where our next stop is and also conveniently placed to Old Town. Cheers. And it's open. And it's open. Look at those. Really? I will be getting one of them. Munich's Old Town is centered by the city square called Marienplatz, which has been the center of the city since 1158. The entire area of Old Town's perfect to wander at any time as it's an entirely pedestrian zone full of shopping, eating, or gazing at all the beautiful buildings. Of all the beautiful buildings that you can stand and gaze at in Munich's Old Town in Marienplatz, my personal favorite is Neuss Rathaus, which is called New Town Hall, or it translates to New Town Hall, if that makes sense. It serves as the host of the city government and dates back to 1909. It's built in that Gothic revival style that's a personal favorite of mine and reminds me a lot of Grundplasse in Brussels, which is probably my favorite building that we've seen so far this year in Europe. Here in the center of Munich, there are so many beautiful churches, so rather than try and see all of them, which would take literally all day long minimum, we're going to keep it to three. But we're gonna do this a little bit differently than we usually do. First up is the Francorche. This church is easily the most recognizable from the outside, and from above, it is definitely the largest here in Munich. It was heavily damaged during the Second World War, so a lot of it has been reconstructed since the 40s, but the outside is nonetheless very impressive. The second church that we're visiting, we're going inside, but mostly because of the tower climb. The entry into the church here at St. Peter's is free, but if you want to climb to the top of the tower, up all the 300 plus steps, and I think 56 meters, then you have to pay five euros each. And it gives us great views of Marienplatz from above. So I'm excited. I think it's gonna be worth it. But it's a lot of steps, so let's go. It would appear the way to go up and the way to go down is the same staircase. So there's dual traffic going on. You guys are so close. <laughs> that that's oh, encouraging. That's awesome. <laughs> How you doing? No, well, it's hot. See, I put together our scripts, our itineraries, and all that. And for some reason, unbeknownst to me, I always seem to do this to myself, where I pay to do things to make me uncomfortable, like pay to go and enjoy hikes. I don't know why I do this. So as you can see, the views are very beautiful, but it's a little bit high, so I'm looking forward to the third church. Let's go there. The first church that we visited was all about the exterior. The second church that we visited was all about the views from the tower, and the third is all about the interior, and you are going to see why. Awesome Kirche is a Baroque church built in the 1700s by a pair of brothers with the last name Assam, hence the name Assam Kirche. The reason I chose this church for showing off the interior should be pretty self-explanatory. Apologies for not a ton of shots on the inside of the church. I really tried to be as respectful as I could because there was a service going on, which is a little bit surprising because it normally opens at like 9 or 10 a.m., but on Fridays it opens at 1 o'clock, and it's because there's a church service. But 
currently there is still a service going on so i just try to be as you know as respectful as possible yep <laughs> it took the roots right out of my mouth One of the best things you can do in Munich is visit a Hofbräu, which is essentially a, the German version of like a tavern or a pub. It's kind of like a beer garden. And we're about to head and get lunch at the most famous of all of them. Well, it's definitely a major tourist attraction. Hofbräu House is definitely worth a visit. It's a three hall that dates back to the 16th century. So our waitress just came up and hit us with a ton of German, which is natural, we're in Germany. And uh, all we were, all we did was like panic and say, uh, two, two steins? She was like, two steins? We were like, yes. She was like, okay, and just took off. And uh, the steins are gigantic. So the rest of this vlog could be interesting. We'll see, but either way, it's Hofbra House. You gotta get beer, so that's what we're doing. So these two steins of beer was 20 euros total for both of them, or 1980. So that was our lunch budget. So guess what lunch is today? Beer. But when in Bavaria do as the Bavarians do, uh, I feel like we're representing this area of the country very well. I think they're in their wedding video. They're filming. This is kind of a problem with all the noise and all the beer and all that stuff because we still got more to show you. And one of them is like a really classy place. All right, now that we've gotten our taste of the Hofbräu House, we are headed to some place a little more classy. So we gotta compose ourselves. <laughs> The Munich residence is a massive royal palace that was home to the Wittelsbach monarchs who ruled over Bavaria until 1918. We pulled up GPS in an effort to go into this palace, but unfortunately it does not look like it's gonna work out. It's nine euros each and it's supposedly really beautiful, but we've walked all around this place and can't find the ticket office. And I just looked and I think I found it and it's like a 10 minute walk around the palace. That's how big the palace is. So I think what we're gonna do since we're a little bit crunched on time is we're going to hop on the public transit and we are going to head to their summer residence. Those dudes are gigantic. Some big carp. They look like carp. All right guys, we have taken the public transit all the way to the west side of the city and we are now at Schloss Nymphenburg, which translates to Nymphenburg Palace. This palace was built in the 1600s by King Ferdinand Marie. He actually gifted this land to his wife because she gave him a son after 10 years of fertility issues. She gave him a son, and in response, he gave her all of this land to which she built this Italian-style Baroque palace. Now, I know we normally go into at least one of these palaces and we've not gone into one so far, but I promise you if you wait to the end of the video, we've got something planned. It's gonna be so nuts. Exciting. It's gonna be a wild night. And it costs more than the price of the admission for both of these palaces. So I think it's gonna be totally worth it. Before we headed home to get ready for tonight's festivities, we wanted to pop over to Olympic Park or Olympia Park and show you guys this place. This is the site of the 1972 Summer Olympics and it's now 85,000 square meters of public park for people to enjoy. So the highlight of Olympic Park is unquestionably Olympic Stadium. It was the site of the opening and closing ceremony for the 1972 Summer Olympics. And what makes it really unique is the fact that it has a tent roof. Now, I don't know if there are any others like that around Europe or around the world. If you know, then let us know. But it's the first that I've ever seen with a tent roof. And it was also the home to Bayern Munich until I think 2005 when Allianz Arena was built. But a little bit more on Bayern Munich just a little later. So as you can see, this park is absolutely massive and it would probably take an entire vlog to show you all of it and it would probably take an entire five vlogs to show you all of Munich. Munich is massive and we still have some more things to show you. Before we go to our final thing for tonight, we wanted to go back to our neighborhood and show you another side of Hofbraus because Hofbrau House is the biggest one in the center of Munich, but it's not the only Hofbrau. Again, I haven't mastered that. Oh, no, me neither. As if we haven't had enough beer today. There are a bunch of these around in the surrounding areas. The Hofbräu House that we went to earlier in the center of Munich is the main beer garden. But there are some in the surrounding neighborhoods that are your more local style pub. But there's no pretzels being carried around here, so we might have to get one at our next activity. The big surprise that has not been much of a surprise, you probably figured
figured it out already, but we have tickets to the Bayern Munich Bayer Leverkusen match here at Allianz Arena in Munich. So we are going from here to Allianz Arena tonight to go and watch some Bundesliga action. Red and, and a and a we debated heavily about whether or not to pull the trigger and buy these tickets and we and felt us, like we absolutely had to do it. And us finding these seats. Yeah. Like together. Because finding seats together we've learned is like the hardest part. Yeah, and one good really good thing about here is it's really hard to like get scammed out of bad seats. So they're basically scaled between 40 euros to 80 euros, and that's really the most you're gonna spend unless you get like a suite. Yeah, it was a little bit higher than what we budgeted for, but this is gonna totally be worth it. This is insane. Today was all about exploring Munich and experiencing an epic Bayern Munich match. Obviously this city is massive and in order to show you everything, we need much more time here than what we're showing in this video. However, we aren't leaving Munich just yet. We planned this trip at the end of September for another reason than just today. We'll see you in a few days from Oktoberfest. Sometimes things just don't go to the plan, like the coffee <laughs> shop being closed and not being able to find the entrance to a palace. And ordering too big of a beer. <laughs> ordering way too big of a beer. Oh my goodness. <laughs>